Hey friends, I'm Henry with Brainstorm Acres, and for a change, I'm in the greenhouse. Now I'm not going to talk about plants, but I am going to talk about some things we do to keep plants warm, and a little bit of discussion about camping and things are get, getting ready to happen with the new season. If you're like me, you really won't like paying $10, $10 for a cylinder of propane fuel. To give you an idea, I can buy a gallon of propane for about a little less than $5. So I'd have to hook four of these up at 10 bucks a piece to match up with that one gallon of propane so this is not the least expensive way to go now it's very convenient it's nice for camping it's nice for a barbecue it's nice for a lot of things but a lot of times these cylinders don't go very far well, let's talk about some alternatives there are people who will tell you just refill this cylinder can you do it? Sure you can. Have I ever done it? Yeah, I'll admit to it. It's kind of a convenient way and it's a lot cheaper. But, did you know that these cylinders are not approved for refill? The reason for it is pretty simple. These cylinders have a much thinner steel than the large barbecue cylinders, the five and seven gallon tanks that you might use at home. The problem with that is every time you fill and empty one of these containers, the sides flex. Oh, and there's also a, a pressure relief valve over here on the top. If you insist on refilling these cylinders, you can do it. There are gizmos and gadgets available th through a lot of sources that will help you put propane back into one of these cylinders. If you're going to do that, and I'm not going to tell you how because it's against the rules, guys, and it can be dangerous. But if you're going to refill this, you want to make sure that you don't overfill it. That means you need to have a digital scale and the right kind of connections, and you have to really know what you're doing. These pop-off valves, these safety relief valves, can let go spontaneously as they've been used multiple times, and then you end up with a propane bomb. If you have a pound of propane in the cylinder and the pressure relief valve goes off, you're going to have a pound of propane filling up whatever space you're in. So, there are some alternatives. Well, one that you may have seen here on our homestead is we use a small catalytic converter that's a stove to heat the greenhouse space. We don't use a lot of propane, we just use enough to keep the temperature in the greenhouse above the critical temperature for the cabbage and broccoli and other vegetables that we grow here in, this, in the winter. Well, at 10 bucks a container for a cylinder of propane, that little heater will take up at least one tank a night. Well, let's take a look at it. This is a well-used and well-loved catalytic heater. The cylinders, if you're going to use the disposable cylinders, go in these spaces here. I'm going to disconnect this hose that goes to a much larger propane tank so I can illustrate how things work. Now sometimes you'll have a release of propane gas and it smells bad. Ew. It smells bad.
the propane cylinders go in very easily it's no big deal you screw it in close the door and you're done at ten dollars a canister well, let's look at another way of dealing with this now we've been using this contraption all winter long it works very well it consists of an iron pipe that has multiple outlets on it it plugs directly into the propane tank and then I simply use a rubber hose that goes from this propane tank to the heater it works great but there's one problem with these hoses as they age and they will age sometimes they'll develop small leaks this hose is a high pressure it's about 100 psi from a typical propane tank so you will have the possibility of propane leaking out from this hose and the problem with that is propane is lighter than air so it will lay down in the low spots in your tent your greenhouse wherever you using one of these heaters and then if you have a source that can light the propane off you're going to have a fire now that happened to me a number of years ago I was using hose just like this it was in our big pavilion that we use for Irene's business I looked down to see some flame dancing along the hose that was not a happy time because I'm in a canvas tent with a canvas drop cloth with bedding right next to where I was working could have been really bad so what do I do we were asked several months ago to take a look at some propane hoses from a company called Patio Gem. I'll put the information in the show notes, including some links to the products that I'm going to be talking about today. They ship these to me for free. We're not being paid apart from getting these products for free. Now you'll notice that this hose looks different than this hose and that's because this one has a braided stainless steel covering on the outside which is really great because it improves the abrasion resistance of the hose I think that's what happened when my hose started leaking and caught fire I think that it got abraded over the years at least it got abraded and then it caught fire well this will help Yeah, don't forget that when you're hooking and disconnecting propane fittings, the fittings that go into the propane tank on the inside are turned in the opposite direction that you normally use for normal screws. So in this case, it looks like we're trying to tighten this up. And what we're actually doing is removing it. More propane. <laughs> Smells bad. That's the mercaptan. That's the odorant that's put into propane so you can smell it. Otherwise, you wouldn't smell it. Now you can see a typical propane connection. This is internal threads that go into the cylinder. This is the iron riser that goes up to the rubber hose. There are several other fittings, and that's one of the reasons why we actually use this when we go camping, because now I have a fitting that goes to our stove and one that can go to a lantern. Well, let's look at how quick this is to set up. This hose is five feet long. That'll be plenty for what we're going to do today. Now remember I said that if you're using the internal threads on a cylinder, you turn it to the left to tighten it. Well, this has an adapter that has the threads on the outside that uses the threads on the outside of the cylinder. So I get to turn it the normal direction. Now the business end. 
straighten this hose out. Starting the threads in this heater can be a little tricky. There we go. All right, so now this seven gallon tank of propane replaces that little one gallon, that little one pound cylinder of propane. This heater will run for days on this cylinder of propane even if I turn the heat all the way up. Now, typically we don't run this at night when we're camping. We'll run it at night here in the greenhouse. But in the greenhouse, I never need to tur turn it up beyond number one. Now, taking this all apart is exactly the opposite. Unscrew it. And disconnect from the cylinder. Now I'm going to leave this connected because I think we'll probably use this in the next several nights if we actually need to have any heat in here. Now there's one more product that the good folks at Patio Gem shipped to me. This is um, a low pressure hose. This is intended to go between a low pressure outlet on an RV propane tank so that you can feed other devices, especially things like the Blackstone grill or some of the Weber products. This has a long hose on it, it's 12 feet long. That means that you can set up away from your RV. Now I don't have a connection anymore for this kind of a hose, but I'll give you my initial impressions. This hose is great because it comes with a right angle. That means you can connect this to your Blackstone grill by attaching it there and then plugging it in to your RV. This is a quick disconnect. It's kind of like what you have on your air compressor. So this is a way of connecting quickly and disconnecting quickly. And then one, a one pound, a one PSI, one pound per square inch pressure in this hose isn't a whole lot. So you don't have to worry about it coming apart too quickly. I wish I'd had one of these years ago. But you know, if you don't want this right angle, you can remove the angle bracket, the angle connection right here, and you have another way of connecting it up. Let's talk a little bit about propane cylinder and propane cylinder life and its safety. Well, we've already talked about these one pound cylinders. They're not intended according to DOT, Department of Transportation. It is illegal to refill these cylinders. Now, you can refill these cylinders, like go with a barbecue or go with an RV or a trailer, things like that. What most people don't realize is there's a life that's expected for these cylinders. Now I have a couple outside that are old that I'll be using for some other purposes. I won't be filling them with propane. These cylinders can be renewed for I think a 12 year time. So the, the certification lasts for a certain amount of time and at that point it gets inspected by a qualified gas inspector. A lot of times that can be done at a fill-up location and they'll recertify it for an additional 12 years. But at the end of that 12 years it's over. You need to replace the cylinder. Now the other thing is if you have a lot of rust and that happens fairly typically if you live in a wet environment or near the ocean, especially the bottom ring of that cylinder will start rusting out and you'll have surface rust or even structure rust underneath. That can be dangerous. So you want to pay attention when you're using propane cylinders of any kind. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications because we'll be doing a lot more.
We'll talk with you later. Bye. And keep on brainstorming. We are. <laughs>